Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. I'm Noreen Burke. If this is your first time, welcome to my channel. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back to see me. If you've watched my channel before, you know I live in a very small rental. It's a two bedroom, 800 square feet, and I had my two children in one room, and I, of course, had the other. And as they got older and started having very different lifestyles and interests, I thought, why am I taking up an entire room when I would love to have this outside space? Previously, this outside space, which is what you're seeing in my garage, was their playroom. I decided to let them have their own spaces. I took this over as my office, which I love. And since all I do in my room was sleep, I decided those eight hours a day just wasn't worth having an entire room to myself. So I gave it up. This has been one of the best decisions for my family. Now I know this doesn't work for everyone, but every once in a while you find yourself in a situation where you need to have your living space do multi-duty. And that's what I'm gonna show you today, is show you how I am living in my living room and give you a tour of my space. Let's get started. living room is actually really big. It takes up, I'd say, about 40% of the house. The front room is 11 feet by 22 feet, and that is a big space. The front door is right in the middle of the wall, and when you first walk in, you're looking at the heater, and then off to the side is the door that goes to the hallway to the bedrooms, and at the opposite end where the right side is, is the door to the kitchen. So what that means is because the door is kind of weirdly spaced, there's not enough room to put an actual table there. We had our dining room table there and it meant you had to walk around it every time, which wasn't a huge inconvenience, but it's strange to have a table right in the middle of a pathway. So that meant that the main living area was always off to the other side. There really isn't a lot of other configurations you can do. So initially I had this room divider set up to create a space where I had a bed behind it. And this was nice. This gave me my own little private space, but it made the front room dark. And that actually added to a lot of my depression that I struggled with over the holidays. So I needed to open up the space, make it brighter, and this is what I'm currently living with. This is the view from my kitchen door, and I love this. I love how bright and open it is. It doesn't feel crowded. I'm not one for placing all of the furniture around. I love creating little cozy spots to have. And because my kids are still teenagers, we still do a lot of strange activities. One of the funniest things we do as a family is one of us will randomly go into the yoga pose tree and then everybody suddenly stops whatever they're doing and we all go into tree pose and then we just do a strange two minute guided yoga session. It's funny to us, it's what makes us crack up. But having this big open space allows us to do silly things like that. We do dance parties, we do games. So I like having that open space. This sectional couch has been wonderful for us because it has the little chase area that has storage in it. You're gonna see where that goes in a second. And this entertainment center is actually just a hall tree and two narrow bookcases that are flanked around it, but it looks like an entertainment center. So going into the other half of the room, this bay window is really what allows this room to feel bigger. It gives it almost another two feet inside, which I could not reflect inside of that floor plan, but here's where I sleep. This sectional at nighttime, I just lay out a memory foam mattress. I put a sheet comforter on top of it and I sleep with a blanket. This works for me and I know this doesn't work for everyone, but I live alone with just my kids. I plan on staying that way, so this is perfect for us. I did create this small narrow shelf behind it, which is big enough for me to have my electrical outlet and a drink. How I built this is I just got some scrap lumber. It's 24 inches high and four feet long. And because I knew there wasn't going to be a lot of weight on it and there wasn't going to be a lot of movement, I just added two screws to the end going into the support pieces. Now when it's time for me to take apart my bed, it's a breeze. I fold up my blanket and because it matches the couch, I kind of use it as a backrest later. 
I fold my memory foam bed into thirds, tuck my pillow in, and no one knows my entire bedding is tucked in that chase part. I then rescatter the pillows, and I would be doing this on my bed anyway, so it's not any extra work. And there you have my bed. During the day, it's the perfect couch and we could all relax there. And at night, it just takes me a moment to go ahead and set it up. Now, this area holds most of my hidden storage. There are three areas here that hold the things that I use the most. So let's go through one by one. The first area is a piece I've discussed before. This is a little phone table and it came from Norm Thompson a long time ago, but the hidden storage inside is the perfect place for my laundry and my rain boots. I don't know what I would do with my laundry without this piece of furniture, so I love it. I wish I could provide a link, but it was several years ago. The second hidden storage that I love, I've also shown you before, and that is shoe storage I made out of foam core. If you're interested in how I made this, I'll have a link to that video in the description below. But I can fit eight pairs of shoes in this. I used to have it under my bed, but when I got rid of the bed, it fit perfectly under this chair and it slips aside. And if you don't know what's there, you honestly don't notice it. Now, I'm gonna go into the third part of that in just a moment. I wanna show you some other storage things I do. On my bookshelves, I have these little fabric bins and I use the base that's supposed to stabilize it as a lid so you don't see what's inside. I can easily grab inside, grab my shoes. This is my pajama bin, but no one has to see what's inside and it also keeps the dust and dog hair that's always floating around from going inside of my things. The other thing I've shared before is these panels on the side. This used to be my room divider. When I moved it back, I still wanted to have my hidden closet. So I just have a dowel that's attached to the wall and the other end to the bookcase. I'm able to hide my vacuum in here and just close the panel when I'm all done. It's on a hinge against the wall. And on the other side, I have it also hinged to the wall. And when I pull this one out, it reveals a hidden bookcase where I just have some odds and ends that I wanna keep in the house, some purses, some other boots, basically things that I don't have a large enough space for. This is the perfect hidden space. And when you pull back and look at my entire unit, you don't think anything of it. Another area I haven't even utilized yet is because this is a hall tree, the bench lifts up and I have all kinds of hidden options in there. Right now it's empty, but I'll probably be filling it up as it gets closer to Christmas. Now the third hidden thing over here you're looking at right now is my dining room table. I had recovered this folding table in a trash to treasure upcycle in the spring. We are now using that right in front of this dresser and using it for our dining table. I just pull it out from behind the chair. I have folding chairs that always sit in the corner, which you can't even tell. And when I'm done, I just fold it all back up and put it away. This allows this open space to be utilized any way we want. Now the dresser is doing wonderful storage double duty. Since I can fold up all of my clothes in those small fabric bins, those big drawers give me an opportunity to store things that I have no other space for. Because this is such a small house, there isn't a lick of storage cabinets in the bathroom. Nothing. I have installed shelves so we had a place to put our towels and our toiletries. The linen closet that's in the hall, I don't even know why they call it a linen closet. It's eight inches Deep. I am not kidding you and it is about 14 inches wide. It was truly an afterthought that may have actually been added from somebody who lived here a long time ago but it's not big enough to place anything except a few strategically folded towels and linens. So using these drawers gives me the opportunity to store larger things like all of our games. Our Scrabble board is so big there isn't a single cabinet for us to put that in. Putting it in here lets me get that as well as all of our other games. And it's not taking up any other shelving that I would want to use for things that we get to more often. Now this other drawer is our DVDs. Now I'm thinking about getting rid of these. I've been saying this for about a year. 
we are typically streaming everything. So I'm really thinking that we should just get rid of this. But for right now, this drawer is the best solution. I used to have all of these on a bookcase and I was able to fit them all inside of this one drawer. This is the Hemnes drawer set from Ikea and I love them. They're very deep. When they pull out, you get complete access. You know, sometimes when you pull out a drawer, you can't get access to the things in the back. These drawers allow you to get 100% access to everything in them. So I love this dresser. Moving on from here, when you're at the door, this is what you see. This is just a little sofa table. Because there really isn't anything else we could do to this space, I usually use this as my decor, where I decorate for Christmas, the holidays, and just to give it kind of that, here's what you're gonna get in our house feel. And also because I can't move this heater, it just becomes the natural room divider line. It is right smack dab in the middle of the room. So this is what our whole room looks like, and I really enjoy this space. I don't think that when you walk in here, you would ever look at all of this and go, oh, how embarrassing she sleeps in here, because there isn't anything visual that gives it away that this is my bedroom in the evenings. My girls and I love watching movies in here. We have family time in here so often. And as the evening wanes down, I either kick them out and say, okay, go to your own spaces, or we just naturally all kind of go our own ways right around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. So it works perfectly for me. And because I'm always the first one up, it's great. I just walk away from the space. I come out in my garage space and work for a little while. And then as the sun starts to come up, I'll go ahead and put it all away, open up the blinds, and it's just a family space again. What do you think of this space? I know it's unconventional to have your living room be your bedroom as well, but I am trying to get that mindset of living in a smaller space because I am hoping that I'll get to live at least part-time in an RV. So making myself have multi-function areas is just prepping me for the day that I'm hoping to get to live in an RV. I already know that if I get the RV I'm hoping for where it has the bunk above the driver's cab and then a bedroom in the back, I'm sleeping above the cab and that bedroom that's in the back is going to become my craft workspace. There is no way that I'm not going to have crafting things with me so that while I'm on the road I can still be creative and have a workspace to still put together videos for when I'm doing those organizing jobs on the road with you. Speaking of which, I want to say thank you to my patrons. They are helping support my channel and helping me get closer and closer to my goal of getting that RV and driving out to help you get organized. Thank you so much for watching today. I will see you guys in just a few days. Bye.